Hello, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be looking at how you can create this vintage Y2K style fisheye effect in Photoshop. It has a bit of grain, it has some print textures. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna open my new Photoshop document and set up my file. So this is dependent on your use case, but for the purposes of today's video, I'm gonna be setting it up as 1080 by 1080 pixels at a resolution of 300 DPI. And once open, I'm gonna drop my image in. For this, I'm just using a stock image, but we're gonna to wanna to position our image and make sure that our image is cropped to the square. So either by using the crop tool or by creating a clipping mask on this base layer and then just converting both of those to a smart object. By having it as a smart object, it just means we can customize any effects that we have down the line as we go, it's non-destructive. So the first step is to click on your image, go to filter, distort and spherize, which will bring up this window, allowing you to warp your image over a sphere. And you can see how that works in this little window here, which is why we wanted it to be a perfect square. Settings wise, a subject would be more warped on a fisheye lens the closer they were to the camera. So that's a good sort of starting point if you're trying to get a realistic outcome, but feel free to play around with whatever you think works best. For me, I'm gonna go and set mine at about 75%. I think this is looking good. Next, we're gonna to wanna to create a new circle layer. This could be any color, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna scale that up and make sure it's centered on our artboard. Next, we're gonna create a solid black fill layer and convert that to a smart object. Come on, click on our circle. And with that selected, we can click on our black solid layer and then create a new mask. And then we can press Command I to invert that mask. Sweet, so we can now deselect this and then delete our circle layer. So this is gonna be our custom vignette layer. And with it being a smart object means that we can apply various effects to this and then come back and customize them settings at any point. As mentioned earlier, it's non-destructive and we wanna try and keep everything as non-destructive as possible. And if you go to this little link icon here and click it, it will actually unlink that mask. So that means that you can actually scale the mask that we've created, move it around as well. So even once we've got our effects on this, we can sort of scale and move this vignette around the image if we wanted to. It's mainly useful to crop in or out of our image. So next step, we're going to want to right click on our vignette layer and go to blending options and then go down to outer glow. We're going to select a nice blue or purple color and make sure that our noise is down to zero. We're then going to play with the opacity, the size and the range to get the desired result. I've set mine to opacity of 31, the size at 32 and the range at 37. We can keep the blending mode as normal, but this is all dependent on your image. So once we've added all of our other effects, we can have a look, see if it's you know too much, if it stands out a bit too much, and then we can change the blending mode if we feel that we need to, but we can come back to that later. So for those of you wondering why we're adding this glow, it's actually called a chromatic aberration, commonly known as color fringing. In this case, it is being caused by the curve of the glass on a physical fisheye lens, which is normally like a bluey purpley color. So yeah, every day is a school day. So we can click off that. Next, I'm gonna click and add a curves adjustment layer just above my image. I'm gonna select a point in the middle here and just bring it down a tad just to darken some of those colors for a more sort of vintagey look. And then we're gonna finish off this base effect by creating a new layer, going to fill and then selecting 50% gray. We can convert this to a smart object and then go to filter, noise and add about six noise. We can then change the blending mode of this to soft light just to add a little bit of grain into our whole image. The final step of this part is to click on your mask, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just play with that amount to ensure that your vignette blurs nicely with your image and outer glow. Cool, so because we've kept everything as a smart object, we can go back and change any of these effects that we've already previously applied. Colors, intensities, whatever you want, just to get our desired results. You can also go back into the smart object and change the image at any point as well, which is good. We can also finish it off by adding a grainy scan texture to give it a print editorial effect. I'm just changing the blending mode to lighten and slightly dropping the opacity. If you want to grab a grainy texture, then I'll link them down below. I love these nostalgic grainy image effects. And if you do too, I also have this dreamy film haze effect. I've done a full breakdown on my YouTube channel. So go and check that out after this video. But that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again soon with a new one. So take care and see you in a bit.